Hello, I'm Greg, the creator of Bible Flockbox, and I want to welcome you to Prophecies of the End Time. This is a new video series discussing end time prophecies of the Bible and their fulfillment in recent history. These prophecies not only warn us of dangers and deceptions, but help us to recognize the nearness of Jesus' second coming and prepare for it. And let me tell you, Jesus is coming soon. In this episode, I will be discussing prophecies of false Christ and false prophets, as is mentioned in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 5 and 24. There Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. We have some false Christs and false prophets living on earth today and have had several in recent history. The first false Christ I will be talking about goes by the name of Vissarion. His real name is Sergei Anatolievich Torup and he was once a Russian traffic cop until he lost his job. Afterwards, he reinvented himself as a Russian mystic and sect leader. He claims to be the reincarnation of Jesus Christ and heads a religious movement known as the Church of the Last Testament and a small Russian settlement called Petropavlovka. He has around 4,000 followers living in and around the settlement and around 10,000 followers worldwide. One sure sign that this man is not Jesus is the fact that he claims to be reincarnated. Reincarnation is not a biblical teaching. He even has writings contained in a nine-volume Last Testament with 61 commandments. Another dead giveaway he's a fake. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2 forbids adding or taking away from God's word. It states, You shall not add to the word which I am commanding you, nor take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. The next false Christ on our list is Apollo Carion Quibaloi. He is the founder and leader of the Philippines-based Restorationist Church, the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the name above every name incorporated. He has made claims that he is the appointed Son of God. And through the Father's enlightenment that will be coming from the mouth of the appointed Son, fulfilling my ministry, that's why the Son was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. I'm just doing my job as an appointed son. That's why I'm called the appointed son because I will be delivering the words of the Almighty Father of Enlightenment without fear or favor. He has built up quite a large following, including 4 million members in the Philippines and 2 million more worldwide. However, he is apparently a false Christ. One of the reasons is because he teaches radical exclusivism. He has been quoted as saying, What I am revealing to you, as it was revealed to me, was not revealed to others. That's why nobody knows it and nobody can preach it like I do. But that is contrary to the Bible. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20 states, No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. In other words, there are no prophetic truths of the Bible that are revealed to specifically selected individuals which don't match up to the rest of the Bible. Quibaloi has also been quoted as saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Now, when he made this statement, he was referring to himself, not Jesus of the Bible. But, then again, he claims to be Jesus Christ on earth. Not to mention, Pastor Quibaloi is very rich. He got that way by demanding his members to pay tithes to his ministry, which he used to build himself a prayer mountain, including this luxurious home. Quite a contrast from Jesus, who said in Matthew chapter 8, verse 20, The Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 tells us, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye, through his poverty, might be rich. Jesus, since he is the creator of the world, owns all of the gold and silver on it. So he is technically the richest man alive. However, when he came to earth to save us, he didn't use that to his advantage in building palaces to dwell in. He was focused on spreading the gospel. It's not earthly glory that he was focused on, and we shouldn't be either. Our mansions are in heaven. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. 
Next on the list of modern day false messiahs is Alan John Miller. He believes he is the reincarnation of Christ. He also has a group of followers, an inner circle of 13 individuals that believe they are reincarnated people from the Bible. For example, his girlfriend, Mary Luck, believes she is Mary Magdalene from the Bible. They actually run a YouTube channel together called Divine Truth and have a small following. Welcome to the Divine Truth channel. I'm Jesus, but most people call me AJ or Alan John Miller. And I'm Mary Magdalene. And most people call me Mary because I was born in this life, Mary Luck. It is also worth noting that AJ Miller had a previous girlfriend who believed she was Mary Magdalene as well. So not only do we have a bunch of people running around on this planet thinking that they are Jesus, there's at least two people on it who think they're Mary Magdalene. AJ Miller is a former Jehovah's Witness elder from Australia who is disfellowshipped over sexual allegations. A YouTube video entitled Sunday Night inside Australia's chilling new cult claimed that it was over a prostitute, while a website called aj-miller.com says it was for being disloyal to his wife. When he was younger, his mother tried to commit him to a mental hospital for claiming to be Jesus, and he claims that from a young age he has experienced memories about his life as Jesus Christ. He even claims to remember being crucified. And he also says that he didn't perform all of the miracles that the Bible says Jesus performed. For instance, he said he never walked on water. In this way, he casts doubt on the Bible. But of course, he would have to do that because if his followers read the Bible and believed every word of it, they would quickly realize that A.J. Miller is a fraud. We feel that divine truth is God's truth. And as such, it's scientifically accurate, it's logical, it's mathematical in terms of its basis and it contains the reality of everything that happens in the universe. We feel that it's not able to be contained in a book, not able to be contained in a book. One thing that makes it evident that all of these people who claim to be Christ are phony is the fact that the Bible indicates that when Jesus comes back, he will descend from the sky and everyone will see him. For instance, Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 states, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. In terms of people who claim to be Jesus on earth, the Bible warns us to not even seek them out. Matthew chapter 24 verses 26 through 27 puts it this way, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The reason the Bible tells us not to seek these individuals out, even if it's out of curiosity, is because they are led by the devil. And if you disobey God's word to go and see them, you forfeit God's protection. And they could put you under a demonic spell to deceive you. Yeah, and, and just let your body feel those feelings. And when you let your body feel them without judgment, you'll be able to then get into the deeper emotions. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter, like, <laughs> just feel the emotion. Just let yourself feel the emotion. Let yourself feel what it was like to have to shut yourself down so much just to please your mother. Because that's, that's what she wants. That's what she wants you to do. Shut you down so much. And she was giving you all of these things, but she wants a heap of things in return from you. And that feels bad to you. So allow yourself to connect with that. That's it. And as you connect to that, you will start really connecting. That's it. And as you connect, that's how much rage is there. You see, this is the childhood rage now. You see that? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And this is the childhood rage that's still there. Let yourself feel it. Yeah. Other false Christs who have come and gone over the years include Jose Luis de Jesus Miranda, David Koresh, and Jim Jones. I'm not going to go into detail about them because they're dead now, and plenty of information is available about them online. Now I'm going to talk about a few modern day false prophets. I'll start with TB Joshua, who is a Nigerian televangelist and faith healer. He is the leader and founder of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. He has a considerable online presence with around 1.5 million Facebook fans and hundreds of YouTube videos, many of them involving obviously fake deliverances from demonic possession. Ah! 
I'm the seven case from the Lucifer. The seven of the Lucifer. Saya adalah tujuh raja dari Lucifer. I know you. Aku tahu kau. I know you. You know me? Yeah. What's your mission here? Destroyer. I'm destroyer. Saya adalah penghancur. I'm destroyer the human. Saya adalah penghancur umat manusia. You want to fight me? Kamu mau menantang saya? Yes. Seven kids. Okay, this mob boy will fight you. Come on, come here. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dalam nama Yesus, tanya. T.B. Joshua is also said to be the third richest person in Africa. However, a former disciple of T.B. Joshua named Basola Johnson testified that he had a harem of women that fulfilled his wildest sexual fantasies, including sexual orgies, and that he used brainwashing techniques to persuade parents to release underage girls to sign up as his disciples. My name is Basola. Until a few months ago, um, four, five months ago, my voice was the one you've been hearing on the Synagogue Church of All Nations videotapes, television programs, and also videos for sale. When Brother Benga, yes, his name was Benga, rushed to the studio and called me and said, uh, T.B. Joshua was calling me. So when I entered, it was something else. I saw him, he was sitting down half naked. So I was even wondering, I said, ah, a prophet, you know. So he said I should come nearer. I knelt down, so he said I should come nearer. So I was taken aback because, you know, the position he was. So he said I should suck his penis. So I did, so after all that, I went back to the studio and we went to the church. What was in my mind that day was that, ah, I hope what you know, we did together will not affect the, the service because I, you know, I couldn't reconcile it. But during the service, you know, he performed what he normally performed and uh, the service ended and we all went back to the studio you know we had to preview we had to you know do some editing around midnight he called me again and said you know i hope no problem i said no problem at all so that day he gave me 500 naira i remember that was the first money he gave me, 500 Naira. So he said I should repeat what I did in the afternoon, which I did. His former disciples testified that T.B. Joshua had a harem of concubines that satisfied his wildest sexual fantasy. He used his brainwashing techniques to persuade parents to release underage girls to sign up as disciples. He had orgies and encouraged competition among the girls. He even slept with three girls from one family. They were the daughters of his former boss from the early days. Let's move on to another false prophet, Creflo Dollar. He was actually in the news recently for requesting donations from his church members so he could buy a $65 million private jet. 
he had a page on his website requesting donations, which was quickly pulled after sharp backlash. Too bad he didn't see that coming with his prophetic gift. Creflo Dollar is also a preacher of the prosperity gospel. This doctrine teaches that God wants us to be rich, and if we obey the Lord, especially in terms of giving tithes to Creflo Dollar's ministry, God will bless us with monetary prosperity, along with other forms of prosperity. Now, you know, we're under the blood of Jesus, so we can't shoot and stone people like we used to. All we have to do is repent, and God will forgive us and, and take us where we need to be. But I tell you, man, if it wasn't for the blood, there'd be a whole lot of us being stoned and being in hell right now, but over the tide. But for the blood of Jesus, we'd be doomed. I mean, I thought about when we first built the dome, I wanted to put some of those little moving bars and uh, give everybody a little card. And they stick it in a little computer slot. And if they were tithing, beautiful music would go off. And, you know, welcome, welcome, welcome to the world dome. <laughs> but if they were non-tithers, the bar would lock up. The red and blue lights would start going, the siren would go off, and a voice would go throughout the entire dome, crook, 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 crook. <laughs> Security would go and apprehend them, and once we got them all together, we'd line them up in the front and pass out Uzis by the ushers. We'd point our, uh, our Uzis right at all those non-tithing members because we want God to come to church, and at the count of three Jesuses, we'd shoot them all dead, and then we'd take them out the side door there, have a big hole, bury them, and go ahead and have church and have the anointing. Aren't you glad we're under the blood of Jesus? Because if we were not under the blood of Jesus, I would certainly try it. This is a very carnal form of motivation to get people to come to church and support Creflo Dollar's ministry. And it's very selfish. We come to church to hear the word of God being preached. Learn how to live morally upright lives and how to help others. Being a Christian is a life of self-sacrifice. Tithes and offerings are biblical principles and God does bless us in return, don't get me wrong, but He never promises us riches. What He does promise us is that He will provide for all of our necessities. Speaking of our physical needs, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As long as we strive to do God's will in our lives and find some kind of occupation to earn an income, God will make sure all of our needs are supplied. Not to mention, it's only obvious that Creflo Dollar and other prosperity gospel preachers are in it for the money. Creflo Dollar owns two Rolls Royces, a private jet, and real estate such as a million dollar home in Atlanta and a two and a half million dollar home in Demarest, New Jersey. 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 3 applies to Creflo Dollar and those that preach prosperity theology. It states, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Verse 3 is specifically damning to prosperity preachers, through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. In other words, because of their desire to get rich, they preach a false gospel in order to make money off their church members. Some other false prophets and teachers who preach the prosperity gospel and belong to the Word of Faith movement include Benny Hinn, Joel Olstein, and Kenneth Copeland, to name a few. Now, I will, I, I, I'll go ahead and tell you this now. Don't, don't get disturbed because he said three billionaires. Now, I don't, I don't want you to get disturbed because uh, since I'm one of them, it'll only leave two more. <laughs> no, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Of course, I'm saying this with a smile on my face, but I'm serious as I can be. But now, I'm not one of those three since I already am one. <laughs> I've already appropriated that. I've been walking in that a long time. Moreover, 
on a website called the word of faith info blog.com there is an interesting testimony of a former word of faith minister that reveals the word of faith movements teachings include gnosticism which includes the belief that people are gods say after me within me is a god man say it again within me is a god man now let's say it even better than that let's say i am a god man when you say i'm a christian you're saying i am mashiach in the hebrew i'm a little messiah walking on earth in other words the new creation is just like god may i say it like this you are a little god on earth running around when i read in the bible where he says i am i just smile and say yes i am too do you know what else that's settled then tonight this hue and cry and controversy that has been spawned by the devil to try and bring dissension within the body of Christ that we're gods. I am a little God. Yes. Yes. I have his name. I'm one with him. I'm in covenant relation. Yeah. I am a little God. Critics, you are gone. anything that he is. Yes. And in verse 26 and 27, let's read it out loud. Ready? Read. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now that's interesting because if everything produces after its own kind, we now see God producing man. And if God now produces man, and everything produces after its own kind, if horses get together, they produce what? And if dogs get together, they produce what? If cats get together, they produce what? But if the Godhead gets together and say, let us make man, then what are they producing? They're producing gods. This is a lie straight from the serpent's mouth. When the devil deceived Eve to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, he told her, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Other well-known false prophets that have been exposed over the years also include Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon religion, and Charles Taze Russell, the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses. I have videos about both of them on my channel page, and I'll leave links to those videos and all of my sources for this video in the description box as well. The Bible warns about false Christs and false prophets in the end time, and we are seeing a fulfillment of that today. The reason for this is because the devil knows that Jesus is coming soon, and he is spreading confusion through these phonies to deceive people. But you don't have to be confused or deceived. I'll leave a link in the description box to some free online Bible study guides which will help you learn more about Jesus and the Bible so you can get ready for Jesus' second coming. The next episode in this series is coming soon, so if you want to get an update once I upload it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, and in the meantime, feel free to check out some of my past videos on my channel page. I have a lot of Christian videos there which I'm sure you'll enjoy if you liked this one. God bless.